Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 3. But the Lord your God will cross over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out, just as the Lord has promised. We've read in the past chapters, we've read and we've heard the story about how God took the Israelites out of, G out of Egypt, how he took them out of slavery, how he took them out of the captivity that they had been in for so long. He took them out, meaning they were no longer slaves. And he's taken us out, taken us out of difficult situations, taken us out of difficult storms in our lives. He's taken us out of things that we thought maybe we could never come out of on our own. And God said, I'm taking you out. And he took out his people. And the Bible says that they wandered the wilderness for 40 years. It should have been a 12 hour trip. 12 days, sorry, 12 day travel to the promised land. But it ended up being 40 years. Have you been there, church? Where you feel I should have had it by now. I should have been where I was supposed to be by now. I should have reached everything I was supposed to reach by now. I should be better than I am by now. My, sh my children should have already been serving in the ministry. I should have been married by now. I should have children by now. You find yourself in a place where you say, I should have already been there. I should have already had it. I should have already been this person. But you've been for such a long time, it feels like you've just been in the waiting. That's what we talked about last week. You've been in the waiting period, in the waiting moment. 40 years is a long time. And for us, maybe it's been a couple years, maybe it's been a few months, but it still feels like a long time. It still feels like a long time when you know what you're supposed to have, when you know what you're supposed to possess, and it feels like a long time when you haven't had it yet. Have you stayed faithful even in your waiting? Would you stay faithful for 40 years? Would you still keep pushing? Would you still keep serving? Would you still keep giving? For 40 years. Would you keep trying? Would you keep persevering? Even if you didn't see the promise, would you stay faithful, church? Would you keep following the directions of God if you had been waiting all this time and nothing was happening? Would you stay on the course if you didn't get it when you thought you should? Oh, hallelujah. And I encourage you tonight, because I know that all, many of you that are watching tonight have been in this waiting period. Waiting for the promise God said you would have. Waiting for the child God said you would have. Waiting for the husband, for the wife God said you would have. Waiting for that job that God said you would have. And you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. Time keeps going. The clock keeps ticking. And it's not changing. It's not happening. But I encourage you to stay faithful. Even when it's hard. Even when you feel like you want to give up. Even when you feel like you've waited long enough and you don't want to wait any longer, just keep waiting. The word of the Lord says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful in the few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. You stay faithful and you stay on the course. And you continue on what God is calling you to do even while you wait. And God says, I will give you much. Because even when you had nothing, you were faithful. Even while you were waiting, you were faithful. Then I will be faithful to complete what I said I would do. Psalms chapter 31 verse 23 says, Oh, love the Lord, all his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. What are, what are you saying, Sister Marissa? Come on. He's going to recompense everything that you thought you lost while you were waiting. 
He's going to give and he's going to supply and he's going to provide. He's going to bless you with everything you thought you lost while you were waiting. Because let's be honest, we feel like we've lost things while we waited. As women, maybe we feel we lost our beauty while we waited. Maybe we feel we lost our energy. We lost our, our security. We lost our confidence. We lost all these things while we waited. It's been so long and I've been waiting and I lost so much along the way that God says he fully recompenses the proud doer. Those that have been faithful, God said, I'm going to fully give it in return. I'm going to fully give it in return. You didn't waste any time. You didn't waste anything. You didn't lose anything. God's saying I'm fully giving it back in return. I'm already going to be 40. I'm already going to be 30. I'm already going to be 50. And I still haven't fulfilled my calling. God is saying, stay faithful. I'm going to fully recover everything you thought you lost. Everything you thought you couldn't have anymore. God is saying, fully recompense everything. Full, not halfway, not a little bit, not droplets. The word of God says fully Everything you thought you lost while you waited, God says fully. Come on, somebody say fully right now. Why? Because you were faithful while you waited. Because you were faithful while the time passed. Because you were faithful when you saw nothing happening. Because you were faithful when the church pews were empty. Because you were faithful when there was no children in your Sunday school class. Because you were faithful when there was no money in the bank. Because you were faithful when you felt like you were alone and had nobody. God said, because you were faithful, I'm going to give you everything fully. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope, persevering in tribulation, faithful in prayer. God is doing something, but stay faithful. Continue to be faithful. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 25. I'll get to that in a second. And I know the waiting is hard, people of God. The waiting isn't easy. It's not easy when you have to wait. When you wait in line at the store, when you wait in line, your feet start hurting. Your legs start, I guess me. You get tired, you get frustrated, you get stressed out. Waiting isn't easy. But stay faithful in the waiting. And you know, there may have been a moment for 40 years as they were waiting, there may have been some that left and said, I'm tired of waiting. There may have been some that left and said, I'm not going to wait anymore. We're not going to get it. Family family members may not have wanted to wait anymore. People that had been there since the very beginning may have said, I'm tired of waiting and left. There may be people that leave and say, God isn't moving or working here anymore. And they may leave. Pastor, leader, director. There may be people that leave your church. There may be people that leave your team. There may be people that leave the ministry because they're tired of the waiting and they're saying nothing's happening here and God isn't moving here and they may leave and it's going to hurt. It hurts, but stay faithful because God says, I will fully recompense everything to you. I'm going to give you the leaders you need. I'm going to give you the students that you need. I'm going to supply the children to to run in excited about Sunday school. I'm going to provide the youth that are going to come in and that are going to be excited about the ministry. There may be people that leave that you thought would be with you until the very end. There may be people that walk away. And I know that it hurts. It hurts. But stay faithful in your waiting because you will see the end result. You will see the promise fulfilled. Don't get discouraged by what you see or how others behave or react. Stay the course. Stay faithful. Stay determined. There may be leaders and teachers or other ministers who decide that they don't want to stay anymore. But stay the course stay the course and you can imagine that it would hurt Moses 
that it hurt Moses. Don't, and maybe he told the people, don't you remember that God took you out? How are you going to leave now? Don't you remember what God did for you? Why would you leave now? Don't you remember how God made a way where there was no way? Why would you leave right now? And maybe he was telling them as they were leaving, as they were gathering their things to walk away, as they were gathering their books to leave, as they were gathering their things to go. Maybe, maybe Moses was telling them and reminding them. Don't you remember all that God has done for you? Why would you leave now? And maybe pastor, maybe teacher, maybe director, you have been saying this to some of the people that have been wanting to leave and you're saying, don't you remember everything God did? Don't you remember how he healed your children? Don't you remember how he brought miracles to your family? Don't you remember how you walked in broken and hurting and he restored you to your fullest and restored your marriage? Don't you remember? And they may leave anyway. But don't get discouraged. Stay the course. Stay the course. Because you stay faithful and the Lord says, I will fully recompense everything. I will bring what you need. I will supply the people that you need. And you will see that it is worth it. It's worth the waiting. It's worth the struggle. When you receive what you've been waiting for, you will see it was worth it. And maybe Moses had to have a, a meeting with all those that stayed and begin to encourage him. And I want to do that tonight. I want to encourage you. Those of us that have stayed, maybe you felt hurt. Maybe you felt broken because others have left. Family members had left. Friends have left. Ministers have left. And maybe you're feeling hurt and discouraged. But tonight I want to encourage you. As Moses maybe had to encourage the people and say, it's going to be all right. We're going to make it. We're going to get there. We can do it together. We can stay faithful. We can wait. We can wait patiently. And I tell you tonight, be encouraged. Because we're going to see it. We're going to see the promise fulfilled. We're going to see the house packed. We're going to see the balcony filled. We're going to see the Sunday school rooms filled with children and filled with young people. We're going to see the altars filled with miracles and signs and wonders and blessings and healings. Stay the course. And I pray for strength and for healing over those that are hurting because of those that have left. I pray over every pastor that is hurting because their sheep have left the fold. I pray for strength and healing. And I tell you tonight, Pastor, the Lord says that it was not your fault. You are not the reason they left. You did your job. You were a good pastor. You preached the word. You spoke like you needed to speak. You said what you needed to say. You led how God called you to lead. The people that have left, you are not to blame. And the Lord says tonight, be encouraged because I have heard your heart. I have seen your tears and I have heard your cries. And I will fulfill the promise that I said I will. I will bring people that will come in and lift you up and encourage you and strengthen you and hold up your arms when you're weak and tired. I will send the right people that will help you. Be encouraged tonight, man and woman of God. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25 said, The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him while you wait even when others have left and you still continue to wait the Lord said he is good to those who have stayed waiting Psalms 37 verse 34 wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land you will look on when the wicked are cut off. The enemy will be cut off. The wicked will be cut off. And the Lord says, but because you've stayed faithful in your waiting, 
you will inherit the land. Tell the Lord what land you're wanting. You who've been wanting to rebuild, you who've been wanting to build a new, a new sanctuary, a new place. Pastor, you've been wanting to build a new house, build a new house of God where the people can come together and worship. The Lord says you will inherit the land. Tell him what land you want and see his hand move and bring that promise to your life. Romans chapter eight, verse 18, for I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed unto us. It's gonna be worth the wait. It's gonna be worth the hardship. It's gonna be worth all the suffering we've done. It's gonna be worth all the hurt of those that have left. It's gonna be worth it. And it's gonna be revealed to us. It doesn't compare everything we've gone through, everything we've had to endure, every moment of, of hurt and sickness and pain is not to compare with the glory that God is about to reveal to us. Somebody say amen right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, say amen. Say, I receive it, Lord. It will be greater than you imagined. It will be so much more than you thought it would be. It will blow your mind. It will be everything he promised that he would give you. You will be walking in your promise. You will be living in your blessing. Can you imagine living in your blessing? And the people that had to, that, that left and that were no longer apart, they missed out on everything that God had for them. They missed out on reaching the promised land. But those of us that have stayed faithful, those of us that have, that have stayed the course, the Lord says, it is not to compare with the glory that I'm about to reveal to you. You thought you had it good before, but you haven't even seen. The word of God says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God is about to do. He's going to do it, church. He's going to do it, pastor. He's going to do it, minister of God. He's going to do it, mother. Don't lose hope and don't give up because it's right there it's right there can you imagine how the people that left felt after they saw the people of God receive the promise so you that have maybe have been thinking about leaving you don't want to go anywhere you don't want to leave because God's about to do something and you want to be part of it you want to stick with it we will see the breakthrough and revival. But stay faithful in your waiting, church. Stay faithful in your waiting because you're going to see it. You're going to see everything you want. You're going to see everything you thought you could never have, but stay faithful. And the word of God says, and you will quickly conquer them. You you will quickly conquer them. See, God knows all about you. He knows all your mistakes. He knows all the bad decisions you might have made. He knows that you were the least chosen of all the others. He knows that you grew up without your dad. He knows that you grew up doing things you shouldn't be doing. He knows you were raised by your aunt. He knows that you were given up for adoption. He knows everything about you. He knows that you grew up poor and you didn't have any money. He knows that you would go to school without any lunch. He knows that your husband left and now your mom and dad. He knows, he knows it all. He knows everything you've been, everything you've been called. He knows everything you've done, but he still says you. He knows what everybody else thought about you. He knows all the rumors. He knows all the stories. He says you. He knows that you don't have the education. 
He knows that you don't have the money. He knows everything and he still says, you. The one no one thought could do it. He says, you will conquer them. You will reach the promised land. You will be blessed. You will enter. You will be written about and preached about. All the others thought you didn't matter, but God tonight says you. You were forgotten. You were abandoned. You were mistreated. You were belittled, abused, hurt. And God says you. The one that everybody says you're never going to be anything. You're never going to be better than your dad. You're never going to be better than your mom. You're always going to be nothing. The one that felt insecure. The one that felt like he didn't matter. The one that felt like she was never going to have a purpose. But tonight God says you. Felt like nobody wanted you. Everybody left you. But tonight God says you. I know everything about you and I chose you. Would you come to him, church? Would you say, Lord, here I am. He says, you, I want to use you. I want to use you. God has a plan for your life. And maybe nobody else thought you had any value. Maybe nobody else thought you were worth it. But tonight God says, you, you right there sitting in your home, you right there watching this program, you right there that has been abused mentally and emotionally and verbally, you right there that has been broken and shattered and humbled. He says, you, I'm going to use you. You're going to conquer. You're going to enter in. You're going to do powerful things. You. The one that felt like you didn't have what it takes. You. The one that was a cheater and a liar. You. And the word of the Lord says you will cross over the Jordan River. And you can imagine that the people of God began to rejoice and say, it's time. It's time. 40 years of waiting and now it's time. And then they, you can even make it a little more personal. It's my time. It's my time. I've been waiting. I've been praying. I've been faithful. I continue to show up when no one else did. I continue to be there and serve even when my family left. I continue to sing my heart out even when I had nobody to support me. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. Come on, somebody say it. It's my time. Message that in right now. And you begin to take it personal. And the people of God, as they looked across the as they looked across the Jordan River, and they began to see everything that they were about to have, they began to see that's what we've been waiting for. And they said, It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And they will all see what God has done in your life. They will all see what God has purposed for you. All the people that didn't believe in you, all the people that didn't support you, all the people that talked about you, they will see what God is doing in you. Come on, somebody. All those that didn't believe. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. It's your time. It's my time. It's my time to step into position and let God use me. It's my time to step into position and let God do what he said he was going to do. Let them all see you cross that Jordan River and have everything you prayed for. It's my time. The other day I was at the store 
And I walked in and I was waiting. And another lady walked in after me. And so when the attendant came, she said, who was first? I was like, right here. <laughs> I'd already been waiting. And usually I'm like, oh, go ahead. But I had been waiting. Mama was waiting for me at home. And I said, it's, it's my turn. And maybe that's how you feel. Like you've been waiting, you've been waiting. Maybe others have been getting called. Maybe others have been walking in. Maybe others have been getting their blessing. Maybe others have been getting all that God said they were going to have. And you've been waiting. But God says right now, who's next? Come on, who's next, church? Who's next? And right there where you are, just say it's me. Say it's me. And God is looking for that person right there, sitting in their home, that's lifting their hand and saying it's me. God is looking at you right now who is sitting there in your home watching this very program and he's, say, he's seeing you lift up your hand and say it's me. He says whose turn is next? You've been in line. You've been waiting. Who's next? So right now just lift up your hands and say Lord it's me. It's my turn. It's my time. It's for me now. Let me experience the next miracle. Let me have the next healing. Let it be me because it's going to happen. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Something I've never seen. I'm getting ready to see. It's hard. It gets tiring. And sometimes it hurts. But God's going to honor your waiting. God's going to honor your faithfulness. And you're going to see his hand move like never before. Just right there where you are, just say, it's my time. It's my time. I pray for strength over your people, Lord, as they continue to wait, as they continue to be faithful, Lord. Even as a church, Father God, as we continue to wait faithfully, Lord, it's our time. It's our time as a ministry. It's our time as a family. And I pray for strength over your people, Lord. I pray for an encouragement. I pray for a spirit of joy. Father God, that you would continue to work. Help them not to give up.
You've thought about going back because there was a time in the waiting where the people of God said, Moses, take us back. And you've thought about going back because you've been waiting. But the Lord says right now, don't go back. Don't go back. Because what I have ahead for you, it's going to blow your mind. Melina, would you tell him, God's about to blow your mind. God's about to blow your mind. Something you've never seen. Yes, don't go back. Oh, oh, oh. Something I've never seen. Something I've never seen. people tonight, Lord. Something I've never seen. 